I'm studying computer science at UCLA, and this summer I'm interning at Google. I'm part of their STEP program, which is a software engineering internship specifically designed for mostly freshmen and then some sophomores as well. Mm. Yeah, I'm interning in a suburb of Seattle right now. I'm working on Android Messages, which is the default messaging app for all Android devices, which is really cool because I'm working on a feature that adds emoji reactions to messages. And this feature is like very common. Think right, about right, any time right. you send a message to somebody, <laughs> they send you a thumbs up. That's the feature I'm creating. So that's pretty cool. And I'm specifically working on Android messages for the Apple Watch. So it's just really Ooh. cool to work on something that will actually impact people. And yeah. I think that's pretty unique for this internship. Mm -hmm. It's awesome that you're building something that you see you yourself using. And I think I would perhaps use it as well. What do you think made your application to Google so compelling? Okay. To be honest, this isn't probably going to be the answer people are looking for. But the first thing I have to say is I attended a lot of events. So I went to a recruiting fair. I talked to the people there. I dropped my resume in a recruiting fair. I applied to many different Google programs. I applied for some reason. I had the nerve as a high school senior to apply for a part time internship for fall 2022, which would have been my first quarter at college. Obviously, I got rejected from that. I had nothing on my resume, but they had seen my resume. They had known me. I applied to the step program and then I also applied to SWE. So they have probably many different versions of my resume on hand from many different points in time. That definitely helped. Also, Unfortunately, I have to say this too. I think UCLA is specifically a bit of a target school for Google. Not oh. so much other tech companies, but Google basically sponsors everything we have. From They have their own recruiting fair personalized just for Google to come talk to us. Our software engineering capstone class is run by engineers from Google. They actually come and teach the class to us, which is actually pretty cool. Mm. I have yet to take it. I'll probably take it in my third or fourth year. Did you know about that when you committed to UCLA? I had no, no idea. Oh. I did not commit to UCLA. My choices were the two ones I was considering. Well, the three ones I was considering were UCLA, here, UW, and UC San Diego. Mm. Mostly, it wasn't that much of an academic choice for me. I wanted to explore something new. I wanted to leave Seattle. I wanted to go to California. I wanted to go to Los Angeles. <laughs> Fun city. I do not regret my choice one bit, but I guess this is kind of an added perk, and it really it worked out well for me, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So what are some do's and don'ts when creating any kind of application, whether that's for schools or internships? Okay, I'm going to break those down into two categories because I do think those two are very different. So for schools, I think you want to stand out personality-wise. Let's be real, if you're applying to a place like UCLA, you're a pretty good student to want to even attempt that. Your transcript is going to be good. You don't have to kill yourself and take 15 AP tests and get fives and all of them. You don't have to like do all that kind of work. As long as you're a good, solid student, you get great grades, you take challenging and interesting classes for yourself, You'll do pretty well on that side of things. You want to make yourself stand out in other ways, likely through extracurriculars. I did have a good amount of extracurriculars mm. and also how you can spin those extracurriculars to make yourself sound interesting, approachable, and somebody people would want to be around. Like the colleges aren't looking for unidimensional people. They're looking for people that are really good at something, but they also are interesting people to be around. In right, other to contribute to the campus and the spirit. For sure. And for internships, I think that you want to be a bit more unidimensional, to be honest. When you apply to an internship, generally the application portal will look something like this. What's your name? What's your phone number? What's your email? Are you authorized to work in the United States of America or do you need a sponsorship? And then drop your resume. You really want to showcase the project and experience you have that's most relevant to what you're applying for. Right. And also something I didn't mention, when I applied to Google, I submitted a cover letter which is kind of a way of expressing your interest. They're almost always optional. I've yet to come across a job or internship in the tech field that required one. Some accepted them, Google accepted them. I sent it out. It was like a, what, a 300, 400 word long letter explaining your interest, why you're a good fit on top of your resume. It kind of adds a personal touch. Mm. And that might have helped my application. I can't say anything for sure, but I definitely did submit one to Google. And I think if you want to get an internship, which many of you watching this probably do, just going that extra mile, spending the extra 45 minutes to an hour and a half to write the cover letter, you know, it'll probably provide. At, at worst, it'll do nothing to help you. At best, you know, it might give you the bump that you need. So. Right. And you mentioned you did all these extracurriculars in high school and you showcased that through your application. Can you just elaborate on like one or two key ECs that you did? Let's boil this down. Okay. Top two. I'll pick two most recent ones. So I think the two that I did in high school in time for college applications were one was I did research here at the University of Washington. Actually, so before wanting to do computer science, I was pretty committed to studying medicine. 
after college and then studying something in college that would lead me to medicine. I was thinking of computational biology because I did like computers and math. Mm. I wanted to combine that with medicine. So I did some bioinformatics research here at UW and I got that published. That didn't get published until after I was actually admitted to college. I, hadn't, I didn't even have my pre-release out yet, but I had presented at a conference. So I had my acceptance to a conference to present at. That, that was pretty cool. And I was able to kind of weave that into other things about how I enjoy contributing to blah, 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 how I'm a good person in this regard. Also, my second biggest extracurricular was probably I tutored at my local community college where I took classes. So I, I was a peer tutor. We, we provide free tutoring for anyone at the college in need of tutoring in certain subjects. I tutored math, physics, and computer science. Yeah. And then, you know, it was, first of all, it was a lot of fun to me. Second of all, I got money and that was my <laughs> first job. It was really fun. I highly recommend doing any sort of tutoring to anyone in high school. And third of all, I was able to kind of tie that in. I think that was where my best essays came from, talking about like the personal connections that I had with some of my students. And you know, in the US community colleges, they're for the community. You've got anywhere from like 14 year olds sometimes. I was a classmate with a 14 year old, which was kind of crazy, to like 65 year old. I was tutoring this one guy who was 65. He wow. wanted to, he, he never finished high school. And he was like, you know what? Now that I'm 65, I'm retired. I want to come back and finish high school. So That's I was tutoring beautiful. him. Yeah, it was. It led to a really like, it was first of all, like inspiring as a tutor. It also led to some good essays. I have to say those were my best essays. Mm. He was like, I was tutoring him, what was it? It was a subject called Intermediate Algebra. So think like Algebra 2, like logarithms, exponents, graphing lines, stuff like that. So it was just, it was a really interesting experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's really important to do some sort of extracurricular activity that involves people, not just by yourself sitting at a desk, like typing away or something like that. Actually sure. being in, and you did have that though, technically yeah. for the research. The research thing was mm -hmm. that. But pairing that with the tutoring, being able to connect with community members and helping them and showing your altruism is incredibly important. I think that was really compelling for the UCLA officers. I hope so, yes. So what single piece of advice would you give for high schoolers who also want to attend a top university? What single piece of advice? I would give to high schoolers. Okay, so here's my piece of advice, probably not what you're gonna be looking for, but I would say enjoy your high school years. They're only gonna happen once, but enjoy them in a way that's meaningful. Don't enjoy them by watching Instagram reels constantly, <laughs> like what I was doing during COVID. Or and find getting, a like, good balance. Find a good balance. You can do stuff to relax, of course, but do stuff that like you actively enjoy as like cool things. Like if you like to code, like make an app, if you enjoy that, if you, to be honest, I can't give many other examples. I'm a computer science major. <laughs> if you're like, if you like doing research as a biology major, try to try to push yourself and find a research position like that. But also, be sure that you're not doing things just to build your resume. There's always a chance you don't get into the top college you want to go to, and you're you end up either like, you know, at a college you wasn't your, wasn't your first choice, you know, something like that. If you like spent a lot of time in high school just working for college apps and didn't actually enjoy a lot of the stuff you're doing, that's something you're definitely going to regret. So make sure you're having fun along the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we hear about this passion thing a lot. Make sure you do things that you like. And sometimes we have to do things that we don't like, like obviously our school responsibilities. But I think it's by doing things you're passionate about, it gives you the energy to fulfill those things that you might be obligated to do. Yeah. So that's awesome. It seems that you're very passionate about CS. And so thank you for your remarks. Yeah, of course. Thank you. I don't even know where it is anymore. <laughs> I'm from here, from Seattle. I went to just a local public high school. Actually, my high school experience was like centered around COVID. So mm. my ninth grade year, I had a full year. I transferred to a new high school for a bit of 10th grade and then COVID happened and I was online for a year and a half. Here in Seattle and Washington State, we have this program called Running Start, which allows upperclassmen, 11th and 12th graders, to take classes at a local community college paid for by the state. I was able to take advantage of this program and go deeper into material like math and physics and some computer science classes. So mm. that kind of was a blessing in disguise. Yeah, that's awesome. So what do you think got you into UCLA? Is there any way that you specifically tried to approach your essays? Yeah, I tried to approach them by highlighting certain aspects of the things I accomplished and try to weave them into the prompt. Honestly, I don't feel like that's the best approach. Reading back on my essays, they came across as a bit dry and didn't have enough personality and enough interest in them. That is the approach I took. I wouldn't try to emulate that. I would try to come up with something more creative that stands out more. I mean, there's probably a hundred thousand, at least for UCLA, there's definitely a hundred thousand other applicants who are trying to show off their accomplishments. And then you're in like a head to head fight with whoever has the most absolutely impressive accomplishments versus whoever can capture like the heart and the brain and the eyes of the admissions office readers. Mm with something interesting and unique. Right, so. I think having a story to tell and showcasing your personality is very important. 